then we will take, I will take questions from you about your work and your creative process. Um, and because that's what we just love to talk about here on Watch Me Work. And you can get in touch with me in so many ways. And Lolly will tell you how. So Lolly. Yes. So if you're watching here with us on Zoom, uh, you can ask a question by using the raise your hand function, which is in the reactions tab, likely at the bottom of your screen. If you have any trouble accessing it, just let me know in the chat and I'll help you out. Uh, if you are watching with us live on HowlRound, you can ask questions via the public theater's Twitter or Instagram accounts, uh, or via the Watch Me Work Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's hashtag H O W L R O U N D. Fantastic. All right. Let's get started. We have a timer. Do, 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 do.
All right, all right. Oh, my default microphone has changed. Hey, hey, hey. We are back. We are back. Uh, feel free to raise your hand if you have a question. Thank you, please. Oh, looks like we got a question from Rebecca. You should be able to unmute now. Hi, Susan Laurie. Hi, hey, everybody. darling. Hey, sister. How are you doing? Good to see you. Good. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Good. So just reporting in, um, <clears throat> I, I investigated Substack. Yeah, and I, what you said. I have, well, at first it was like, oh, this is going to be so much work. So, um, but then I've been uh, writing and I just started posting at my medium site about, <clears throat> about the, you know, big explosion and spill of vinyl chloride in, in Ohio, because it's near where I grew up. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it got me thinking about sort of the difference between medium, which is longer than a tweet, mm -hmm. um, but not a marketing blog, not mm -hmm. that length. So it's a longer piece. <clears throat> and Substack that could be used for, you know, some interesting um, explorations. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking of doing a micro memoir because people keep saying you need to write a memoir, but I don't really want to until after mm -hmm. I I'm not sure I want to at all, but uh -huh. after I, you know, the manuscript hopefully gets picked up. Uh -huh. um, and, and that micro memoir is going to be called Toxic Exposures because. I love the title. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's both the actual toxic exposures growing up in South, Northeast Ohio. Um, Substack is a, a, uh, a site for putting your writing up. And people can either pay to read it or you can just let people read it. And I haven't made any decisions about all that. Mm -hmm. um, but it feels like, oh, that would be an interesting way to just get at, you know, seeing how I can present myself to the public and also mm -hmm. write about the stuff that I know. Um, mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. So I'm, <clears throat> I have another medium piece that's going to go up first and then um, I, and I'm, I'll go back to figuring out sort of this great micro mem memoir. Mm -hmm. so, Sounds so exciting. Sounds report. exciting. Thank, thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. I love the update, girl. Thank you. Just, uh, yeah. Well done. Good job. Good job. And it's great that you're exploring, I mean, th you know, things that are like, you know, things that are new, you're already doing the medium thing. So you're like, let me look at Substack and just see if there's anything out there, you know? Yeah. And in, in the sort of all of the instructions on Substack was, mm -hmm. you know, you can post on both. Mm -hmm. People can go between the two. And so it's not like it's a, you only Substack somehow owns what, what gets posted. So, mm -hmm. and I, you know, the reaction to, I mean, the train derailment and the fire and the fire they set were terrible. That was awful. But it's been happening in Ohio and Western PA mm -hmm. for decades. Right. <laughs> Going back to the 50s. Right. So, and it's not so much that they should be punished for that or that, you know, my, but that, we thought it was a good thing. And that's sort of what I want to get at is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we thought all that oil and lamp black in the, in the rubber industry were good things. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then, you know, we ended up with flames coming out of faucets because of fracking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like, what, is, what does that mean? 
Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a memoir, it feels a little more accessible. Sounds good. Yeah. Yay. 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 <laughs> Thank you. I'm applauding you in advance. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. That's what we should do. I just think that's what we should start doing. When we go to like plays, applaud in advance. <laughs> Light, when light when we go when we lights to half we go to people should oh, just applaud <laughs> i love it <laughs> yeah jesse <laughs> hey jesse i can't i can't hear you though brother oh we can't hear you you're unmuted but but is the volume up on your i um, pretend to know how to help you yeah um, you're you're unmuted. Unmuted. Your you're mic. Maybe your mic and your on your com on your computer. Hmm. Here, I'm gonna mute and then unmute you again, and see. Uh oh, it does anything? Uh oh, now you're invisible. Well, well, you know what? You just walked. Look at yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. You're walking behind people who are. Oh my gosh, on the that was weird. He walked by Andrew, and it, 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 that was weird. I was like, wait a minute, that guy. Hi. Hi. Hey. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> yes. So I'm actually here in writing ensemble class right now, and we're I'm actually working on a monologue piece right now. And my question essentially was how do you what what is the best way to generate a sense of realism in a play or especially through your writing and the words that you use uh-huh uh-huh oh, great jesse so define realism please what it means to you um what are you talking about essentially trying to get the characters to seem as if it's real like things are really going on at this very moment in time um and it may be like the word choices that they use and the different connotations on them i don't know if, if that's making sense but mm, because I, in the past I'm have you current, have you go ahead go ahead talk to me have um, you had difficulty i'm currently dif working on a uh, monologue from a play that i'm sort of toying with it's based on how politics um the pandemic and essentially low pay for public school teachers are, are affecting them so much to where they're leaving their jobs midway through the entire school year. Um, I'm an actual teacher in a public school. And so it's something that I'm dealing with now. And I know I have conversations that I have with coworkers and I feel like, okay, these are very interesting conversations. And I feel as if I could use them <laughs> as material but it's like i don't want to take every word that they say but i want to you know just use it the majority of it some of it you know to create right. a, a story right. a moving piece Ooh. right right so right right, right. Is, okay okay how that's, do i that's, create well, that very, realism uh, yeah it's a very it's a really great uh it sounds like a wonderful project that you're that you're working on um, public school teachers, uh, teachers, any kind of teachers are heroes in my book. Um, and it sounds like your colleagues are, you are having incredible conversations with your colleagues. I would just say, uh, I would suggest that you are very mindful about um, kind of like you, you, to use your words, using what your colleagues say to generate your own material. That is not what I would suggest to do. I would suggest that you turn on your imagination. What grade do you teach, bro? I teach um, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Fantastic. My son is in sixth grade. I hope you're not yeah. one of his teachers. Please don't leave. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but, uh, no. You know, but, no, no, no. But, um, you know, I, I'm sure. I would I would suggest you know like his teacher say use your imagination use yeah. your imagination and create yourself some characters if you want or formally interview your colleagues and credit them with documentary style theater you know what I mean but you want to formally yeah. you can you can formally and make it all above board you know because you don't want to be one of those people who rips off people right 
make it yeah. above board, interview them, and 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 you know your colleague Joe and your colleague Jasmine or whatever, and 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 present them in a really upfront way. And then you can tweak and change what they say, but be really clear that these are your colleagues speaking. These are actual people. These are not from your imagination. Okay. Right. Um, if, if that's appealing, then that's one way to do it. You interview your colleagues and then you assemble what they say. Um, and then you, you sort of edit that down and create a theater piece from that documentary theater. Uh, there might be a better term for it, but you know, or you make stuff up. Um, but it's a tricky thing. Uh, so I, I, which, which right now is more appealing to you? What do you think? Documentary theater, <laughs> um, actually pulling them aside to get their views on how things are going and what they've experienced and then taking that and then creating different characters around that. Right. Credit them. Please, please credit them. Yes, you know, because, yeah, okay, so, you know, their names, their, you, you know, let, so when we go to see your show, or we read it in a book, you know, we see that these are the people who gave you the stories. Um, and, and there might be some legal stuff that you got some a few legal things you got to organize to make that correct, you know, you want to come correct. Okay. But that's a, it's a beautiful, sounds like a beautiful project. Just, just get the Thank paperwork, you. get the, come correct. Okay. Yeah. I will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you. We have Kimmy D. Oh, cool. See, there he goes. There he goes in back at That's so fun. That was so <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, okay. We have Kimmy D and then Ben, you'll be after. Hey, Kimmy. Hi. 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 Um, I'm on the same time zone finally. Um, I'm back in uh, New Jersey. Oh, great. Um, my best friend died, and I am the executrix of his will, and um, his family is not very kind, and I'm really going through it. Um, uh, and so I'm so grateful for everybody to be here. And I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm crying. I, I'm I just so trying to hold it together. Um, but I am going to come see you though. I, that's the one good thing. I can see you in the, when you're back at the public. So I get to see you in person for a change. Oh, thank um, you. So thank you. Um, and thank you everybody for being here and meeting. It, it means a lot to me to have this space. So um, as a comedian, um, and as a writer, I don't know how to survive my pain without writing about it. And um, I definitely want to write about this because I don't think we talk enough in art about grief as much as somebody died and then this happened. And we don't really talk about this human experience or animalistic experience because animals go through grief too. And I really want to like delve into it because I'm in it and it, it and it's every emotion all at once, all the time. So I was wondering how could I cultivate material while I'm in this mess because um, it makes more sense to go back to my notes later than to try to recall everything and then make a play. So how would you, would you suggest that like, I take notes while I'm going through whatever it is I'm going through. Does this make any sense? Is this yeah, question? Exactly, even? No, that's exactly, that's exactly what you should do. Right. If it's messy, write about the right, describe the mess. You know? Okay. I mean, yeah. Just, just, just show up every day and and write something about what's going on. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I was sitting on the plane and I, and they were describing how you know all the things that they tell you before you take off, mm -hmm. and I was thinking, how 
fucking stupid are we as a society that we still have to be told how to use a seatbelt? You know, like these are the kinds of things that are popping in my head. Why am I on this plane going across the country for a shitty reason? Why, why do we do these things in life as adults? And then, and I'm just so in the middle of it. I don't know how to cultivate and mine the experiences to make art later. Maybe you don't have to cultivate and mine the experiences to make art later. Maybe you just have to live it. You know, I mean, we it's it's interesting that we're, the words you know cultivate, mine, use these life experiences to turn into art. Who you know, maybe you just have to like live it. Uh, but if you need to write about it, write about it. If you write about it in your notebook, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to turn to art. But as you said, as a comedian and as a writer, the best way for you to process your stuff is by writing about it. But just because you write about it doesn't mean it's going to be uh, become art. Okay. Not everything written down is to share. We know that. Yeah. Right? Those of us who yeah. have notebooks or, or, you know, angry emails and we don't send them. Not everything written is to share. Um, sometimes the writing is just for you. Maybe this writing is just for you. You know, but if you want to keep track, which it sounds like you do, and process, which it sounds like you do, then show up every day in your notebook and write stuff down. I've never, I'm 61 and I've had parents die and friends die, but this is hitting me way different. I'm so sorry. So sorry. That Thank you. I appreciate your love and support in this space. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm so sorry Thank you. Thank you. Just keep showing up to your to your notebooks, you know. Yeah. That, 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 that could help. And keep coming back because we'll be here. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kimmy. Sending you love and support. Thank and you so much. Love in the chat. <laughs> um. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You're welcome. Uh, we have Ben next, and then I think we have Hank on deck after that. Hey, Ben. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing me to um, be here and ask a question. Uh, Kimmy, that really resonated a lot with me. Um, I also work in mental health advocacy. So um, if you want to connect, I'm happy to help you to find some uh, mental health resources to navigate grief. Uh, I'm a two-time suicide attempt survivor from 2011, and I talk about mental health, suicide prevention, death, and all of my work. So uh, I'm really, I'm not, I'm really big on talking about it and helping people navigate it because grief is a bitch. Um, I've been there, um, so I'm happy to offer any resources. I just wanted to share that, uh, and I'm new here too. Um, so <laughs> I'm not sure how many questions I can ask. I kind of have two. Um, if that's okay, if not, someone can tell me. Um, so I really need. Um, some help um, if you have any resources to be able to, or what tools you may use to kind of grade yourself if you've had a successful writing session. Um, for me, um, sometimes the like administrative things of being a creative creep in during writing sessions. And I'm trying to determine if that still counts as progress within the writing session, or if I should be blocking everything out to be able to focus on just being the creative side. But, you know, as a writer, we are a business, you know what I'm saying? So you have to like juggle all the hats and um, I'm multifaceted uh -huh. so I can do that, but am I being successful? Right, right. <laughs> wow, that's that's a really good question, Ben. And I, I appreciate um, the 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 uh, services and help that you're so generously offering on your very first visit to Watch Me Work, but that's very, very loving. We appreciate that. Um, uh grading this this is an interesting the moon must be in something or other this the, the vibe here is really intense today grading yourself for your writing session so so uh bit you you can you can try to track your progress right and that's why we use a timer and again we always say i always suggest you, you use a timer that is just a timer and not your phone okay so you use a time like a kitchen timer kind of thing that'll help you get away from your phone and get away from your messages and Instagram and whatnot. And 
one way to track your progress in your writing session is to, oh, thank you, Rebecca. The moon is in Gemini. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, is to say, I'm going to show up every day for X amount of minutes. So 20 minutes is a wonderful time amount, amount of time, right? And then if you want to grade your progress, Ben, you always get an A plus, Ben. <laughs> I'm serious. You uh, and and you could say SLP gives me an A plus every day. <laughs> I give you an A plus every day, and I don't even know you, brother. <laughs> if you show up and turn on your timer, you know, and sit down at your whatever computer, lap, you know, whatever, whatever you got, your notebook, whatever, right? And you sit there or maybe you stand at your desk and you are there and you are intending to do the work, you get an A plus because that's the tip of the iceberg of the amount of love that you've got to start or continue actually to give yourself. Good job, right? You're doing a good job. No, I'm serious. This is this is what we, we got to get those 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 unhelpful things out of our heads and bring in more of the helpful good stuff good job okay so that's how you can grade yourself show up just show up the very first award i ever got i think what i was in kindergarten or something anyway and they gave out awards i got an award for perfect attendance and right then it clicked in my mind that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep showing up. That's all I'm doing. I just show up. Here I am, right? And that's basically it. So you get an A plus. All we want you to do is show up with the intent to write and see what happens. Okay? I appreciate that. That's uh, very empowering. Um, do I still get... Yes, you do. Yeah. See? <laughs> okay. here, here we are. We're here. <laughs> Come on. Um, so... Um, I, uh, with the help of a friend who's on this call as well, who I won't shout out because I don't want her to be embarrassed, uh, but <laughs> I was able to get a equity and verse grant from the Poetry Foundation um, to develop a really ambitious idea. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I have to have something for them by September of uh, 2023. And I work... Um, I'm a procrastinator and I and this is a really big organization and I don't want to ruin it because they they gave me ten thousand dollars to work on this and they also give away millions of dollars and I one day would like to receive millions of dollars and I don't think that's going to happen if I procrastinate and don't do a good job uh so I wanted to see how do you oh my friend Ashley said it's okay to shout her out Ashley Calhoun is my friend who Yay! helped me uh she's an excellent fundraiser and fund development person uh, especially for creatives. And I feel so grateful to have her on my team. She also helps my, my nonprofit that I have here in Detroit. So thank you, Ashley. She helped me get my, she actually helped me get $20,000 from the Poetry Foundation. Oh, half of it is for um, a poetry slam that my nonprofit produced. And the other half is for me as an artist. And it's really, really weird because I've never been given this money to just do art from my own brain as opposed to producing programming uh, for the community. So I'm really, I'm, I'm excited and scared like Little Red Riding Hood and Into the Woods. Um, so I, I would love some advice on how to manage, I guess, imposter syndrome, uh, procrastination, and then just to kind of hold oneself accountable um, to, because I'm really good at putting things on the calendar. I'm really good at like, at this right. time, I'm going to do this. Do I do it? Mm, you know what I'm saying? So how, how do you, how do you, um, you know, sure. what, what do that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, that's... Uh... Yes, that's something I enjoy talking about quite a bit. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk about making a schedule, keeping a schedule, and the way you hypnotize yourself. So first we're going to do and that. also oh, uh, yes. and you also budgeting, talking? also budgeting too, staying budgeting with what, the, money. Or yes, time? the the both. Well, the money that they gave me, not overspending, because it has to happen with the amount of money that I have. Okay, well, that, that I, I don't know about because I don't know exactly what you're doing. So you're going to have to talk with, I, I, actually, maybe we can talk to you because she knows maybe a little more specifically. But I'm doing this. This is what we're going to start by doing. This, the words come out of your mouth, right? And they're going into your ears, okay? So you be, I want you to be very mindful, Ben, about what you say about yourself. 
you know, things like I'm a procrastinator. <clears throat> Don't hypnotize yourself, brother. What are you hypnotize yourself? Telling yourself that you're a procrastinator. Find a different way. You know, hey, I'm working on getting my work done. Okay. Sometimes I have a block and I got to work through it. Find ways. You're, you're creative. Let's find, find some ways to reframe some of those things you're saying about yourself so that you can set yourself up for success because you're the best hypnotizer of Ben in the universe. And it comes right out of your mouth and goes right into your ears, okay? So that's one thing that helps tremendously, okay? A schedule. Do, what time of the day is your most productive time of day? The morning for me. Great, morning. great. how early? Uh, 8 a.m. Um, yeah. I, uh, yeah. Eight, eight is good. I mean, you like sitting down at your desk or whatever at 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. to get up to start working. But I have to schedule in time for me to be on the internet before I actually start working. So 8 a.m. is where I start so I can start working by 10. That's by 10? By 10? Yeah. Well, you have yeah. to be on the internet for two hours? What do you do on the internet? Um, You know, email. Um, okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and you have to do that before you start writing? Or well, otherwise it's gonna distract me as I'm trying to write. Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. I do. Oh, oh, okay. 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 Well, we'll we'll just we'll just and and so you have from ten until when, um, to to write. Three. Three. Okay. Great. So let's I could probably make do that it. When I break, yeah. Great. Great. So let's make it from ten to eleven. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're gonna lower the bar. We're gonna lower the bar, and give you an hour to work. If you work for one hour every day, okay? From now, 27th of February until, let's just say the 27th of August, right? Then you'll have a month to rewrite or you'll have, it's due September 1st or September, when did you say it was due? September, sep, the program, I have to send a report September 30th. Great, so it's great. So you'll have, so you'll have time to rewrite or polish and have it, right? If you show up every single day for one hour, one hour, then you can like lollygag, do whatever you want for the other several hours until three o'clock. You understand? I do. Thank but when you. When you get on the computer, I want you to, after you've done your emails, you've had two hours to emails. Can you turn off the co Wi-Fi connection, please? Do you know how to do that on your I computer? Do. Okay. Ooh, okay. Shit. Yes. You yes. yes I hey, we have our quarter, brother. <laughs> Why I'm having withdrawal already and I haven't done well, it yet. I'm having withdrawal already. Okay, well, <laughs> well, welcome to your writing life. Then. Okay, so because what you're doing, you're having, you're going to have withdrawal from the internet bullshit that's out there. It's not really helping you at all. And, but you're going to make way for, you're going to make room for this beautiful, beautiful stuff. Right? That's called your beautiful writing that we love so much already. Okay. And that's how you talk about your writing all the time. My beautiful writing that I love so much already. My beautiful writing mm. that I'm doing. My beautiful project that I'm doing. Okay. Okay. My, this, this, I, hey, hey, because, because why not talk about yourself with words of love? Why not talk about your work with words of love and appreciation? It's a gift. You know what I mean? So why not say, I'm, I, and you don't have to bit puff yourself up. You talk about imposter syndrome, which that's not believing that you deserve whatever it is that you have. Is that what that is? What is that? Yeah, that's what it is. Right. Okay. Well, then you can just turn around. I, you know, I, I, I deserve, I deserve the right to have this wonderful grant. I deserve this opportunity. I worked hard for it. I work hard. I put in the time. I do the work. I deserve to have this opportunity. You know, start talking to yourself with words of love or continue to talk to yourself with words of love because I'm sure you do it already. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know you give that look. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you must promise me, you must come back and hang with us on a regular basis. Like, yeah, I, RSVP for uh, the next Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, good. Well, you, you must come back and hang with us like, you know, like, like Rebecca does and like Timothy does and like, you know, you just come back, come and hang with us because we will continue to, you know, encourage you to speak 
about your work and about yourself with words of love and encouragement. It makes a huge difference. And show up for yourself every single day. Come hell or high water, brother. You are at, you were, you have turned off the Wi Fi at 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock, and you've got your timer set. You can do it in three 20 minute increments so you don't get overwhelmed. Three 20 minute increments. Yeah. And you set it and you work, and then beat a bit, it goes off. You can relax and you turn it on again. Okay. Every okay. day, if you do it, you can, you can get there. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben, and welcome. <laughs> um, I think we have Hank up next. Hey. Hi. Uh, thank you for making this space available. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm Hank. I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, Hank. And, and Ben, I really appreciate the question you asked about um, keeping track of time. I actually have my timer right here, so I'm really um, so glad that that's just my own thing. Um, Really, uh, during the pandemic, I gave myself the assignment to write a six-word play every day for a year, um, inspired by your your volume of plays, which I, I uh, read. And and um, and the answer you gave to Kimmy before, I wonder if it applies here. Is is there anything I should try to do with that, or is that? And, and I would sometimes send those plays out to five or six people. I sometimes write a Valentine oh. to my spouse. I mean, and sometimes uh, or to my 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 children. So it really had its its own audience on this. But I have this collection of plays, and part of me just thinks, okay, it was for the moment there. But I wonder if you had any thoughts about about um, that bulk of materials or also maybe it falls in what you said to Kemi sometimes the, the most important writing is is from the soul and it will manifest itself in in other other vehicles other venues yeah that's a great question Hank and and because you're asking the question I'm thinking well they're they are plays right mm -hmm. okay well you could say well plays need to be performed they might need to be performed and if you have the desire to perform them you can perform them or you can get and or you can get your friends to join you mm -hmm. and perform them. That would be fun. You could do it live if you have a local hangout, bar, coffee house. You know, you could put on a series of shows. You could do it on uh, YouTube. You know, you could record them. Um, that could be fun. You could actually have a lot of fun with it. Um, you could do them all in a row in 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 chronological order. You could. Pick just your favorites and do those, but you could perform them. Is performing something that's interesting to you? Yeah, I, I, I'm to, to some degree. I consider myself a, a writer. I like sitting in the back of the theater rather than being at the front. But but I but also like producing and and bringing people together, connecting people, and 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 sharing that way. Uh huh. You, you can you, then you can be the producer, writer. Mm -hmm and maybe director or get someone if you're not into direct you get someone and then actually produce them you know what i mean in again in a coffee shop or on youtube or in a theater if you have a theater that you love or a bar i mean that those kinds of uh a si i love that a six word play it, it's it's six words of dialogue so i do have uh, some license with the stage directions wow that's really great six words of that's fantastic no, that's and I appreciate you. You're the inspiration for that oh, too. Okay. Having seen the 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 365 plays a, a year, so having seen a number of those in different venues, so I, I appreciate your uh, inspiration for that. It's fun, but great for you to keep go for you know having started it and having kept going and having gotten to the finish line too. It's really great. There are so many great venues in Atlanta, and such a wonderful community in Atlanta that it could be fun for you to actually take them into the community and and have them perform, you know? Great, thank you for that inspiration. Yeah. I appreciate it. You're welcome, you're welcome, Hank. Thank you, Hank. Um, we have a few minutes left if anyone wants to uh, ask a question or share thoughts in our last five minutes. Karina. Hi, Karina. Hi. Um, this is actually my first time here. My friend told me about this, so I'm here. I'm really excited hey. to be here. Um, hey, hi, it's really nice to talk with you. Um, I guess my advice that I would love is um, I've written a couple plays. I do it on my side for fun. I produce them sometimes with my friends and 
I am, I have a lot of really passionate opinions and a lot of the things I write obviously come from that place because you want to obviously you're going to write what you're passionate about, but I sometimes have the problem of letting my own thoughts and opinions, like I want to make them so clear with the piece, but I know it's so important for plays to be, to be able to resonate with people in different ways that suits them. And I have this problem where I want, again, to sort of have a character say exactly what I would say if I was in that situation, or exactly what I want to say word to word to people, um, which I know is not helpful because the character is not me. And I know that that's the case, but I have this like trouble with it. And I was wondering if you had any words of advice about that. <laughs> wow, that's a really cool question, Karina. I wonder if the character is in fact you. And do you need to be the character? And might it be, might you be in the show? It's okay. It's okay to be yourself. <laughs> yeah. If you feel like your characters sound like you, maybe they are, or the one character, you know, that's okay. Um, the, do, does that make sense? To, could you, yeah, sorry. There you sorry, go. I just got muted again, um, accidentally. Um, yeah, I actually never thought of that. And I have, I have allowed myself to do certain writing projects or whatever it is where I do ex and I need to express my thoughts and I will write, you know, a one off scene or whatever, where it's, you know, me wanting to talk to someone in my life who I don't feel like I can actually talk to. And that's really therapeutic for me. But I never really thought that that could manifest into an actual play. And that makes a lot of sense. And I do, I guess I am. A lot of that does come from the frustration that like, I'm not able to have the conversation I want to be having for whatever reason with certain people in my life or they aren't going the way I want them to be going and I guess a lot of my writing is a manifestation sort of against that frustration mm -hmm. but and you're right that's like a valid thing that can be the case <laughs> yeah yeah yay <laughs> no, I, so yeah I think I think you should yeah just write the way you think it needs to sound um and if the character is you, or you can have your the same name or a different whatever, but you can be okay with that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming to watch me work. Thank you so much. I just I just put in the chat. Um, our upcoming dates are March sixth, twentieth, and twenty seventh, and April third and tenth. You should be able to sign up for all of those um, on the website. turn out. Thanks, Lolly. Thank you. Have all. a great week, y'all. Thank you. All right. And so we'll be back here next week. Thank you so much. Great.